Day 12 of solving math problems in C until NVIDIA hires me. So we're told that the following iterative sequence is defined for the set of positive integers. If n is even, then we'll divide n by 2, and if n is odd, we'll multiply n by 3 and add 1. Using the rule above and starting with 13, we generate the following sequence. So it can be seen that this sequence starting at 13 and finishing at 1 contains 10 terms. And this problem, the collapse problem, it is thought that all starting numbers finish at 1. And we have to find a starting number under 1 million that produces the longest chain. Let's start with 5 as an example. 5 is going to be our starting number in the chain. And since 5 is odd, we're going to do 5 times 3 plus 1, which gives us 16. So 16 will be our next number in the chain. And since 16 is even, what we're going to do is divide 16 by 2, which is going to give us 8. So 8 is going to be the next number in our chain. Again, 8 is even, so we're going to divide 8 by 2 to get our next number, which is equal to 4. So 4 is going to be our next number in the chain. 4 is even, so we divide it by 2 and we get 2. And 2 is going to be even, so we divide that by 2 and we get 1. So if we count the length of this chain, we get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Drawn are the collapse sequences for 4, 5, and 6. Notice when we're computing the chain length for 5, we're doing a recomputation here. And when computing the chain length for 6, we're recomputing the chain length for 5. Rather than repeating computation, we can use something called memoization. When we compute the chain length for a number, say 4, we can store a result in memory. And when we run into this computation again, we could just retrieve our answer and add it to our current chain length. In this case, when computing the chain length for 5, our current chain length would be 3. And when we get to the computation of 4, we could just add 3 again to get a total chain length of 6. Doing the same for 6, we get our current chain length to be 3, and when we get to the computation of 5, we know it to be 6, so we could do 3 plus 6, which is equal to 9. One more thing to note is when we're computing the chain length for 5, we're also computing it for 16 and 8, and when we're computing the length for 6, we're also computing the length for 10. With all that known, let's get to coding. First, I'll include the standard I.O. library, then I'll define n to be 1 million. Now, I'll initialize a global cache the size of n to all zeros. Now, I'll create a function called count chain that will take a starting number n. And we'll check if that number n is smaller than 1 million. And we've already computed that number. Then we can just return our computed value. Now we'll need a variable called new n. And we'll check if n is even. Then we'll set new n equal to n divided by 2. Otherwise, new n is going to equal n times 3 plus 1. Now we'll type int chain len is going to equal 1 plus count chain with new n. After computing the chain len, we'll check if n is smaller than 1 million. Then we want to store our computed chain length. And lastly, we want our function to return that chain length. In our main method, we'll initialize our base case, which is cash out 1 equal to 1. Next, we'll have two variables, start max set equal to 0 and chain max set equal to 0. Now we'll do 4 and i is equal to 1, i is smaller than 1 million, i++, plus plus. and then we'll make a variable called len and set it equal to count chain of i. Then we'll check if len is greater than chain max, then we'll set chain max equal to len, and we'll set start max equal to i. Finally, we'll print out our result. Now let's compile our file, and let's run our file. And we got 837,799. And our answer was correct, guys. See you in day 13.